My name is Dee Dee Croy, owner of MyFavoriteGroomer.com, based out of Fort Worth, Texas. I've devoted 20 years of my life grooming aggressive, senior, and disabled pets. If anyone can get the job done, it's me. Every pet deserves a groom, and I'm here to give them that opportunity. You were so excited the first time you came. <laughs> yeah, she's so pretty. She, uh, you do an awesome job. Yeah, even little little clip details like in her paws, all that stuff. You go the extra mile, which is great. But you loved watching last time you watched. How was that? How did that feel? It was good. It was it was really cool. It was kind of funny to see everybody debating on what type of dog she was. <laughs> that was that was kind of funny. Everybody knew what she was and had no idea that you know, she's a Britney Spaniel. So. <laughs> Just being able to see it online is that little extra transparency and where you can see how your dog's reacting and you know that she's comfortable and you know that, that you're doing a good job. And it's, it's that extra layer of uh, confidence that you get out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much, both of you, for yeah, letting no me problem. record. No, no problem. No. Hi, everybody. Meet Miss Rebel. She's a two-year-old, and we are going to trim her tail, trim her flag, trim her feathers, trim her duck butt feathers. We are going to trim the feathers today. <laughs> the, the whole butt phrase with you two. <laughs> Tell me what you said about the trimming her... Her tail feathers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. her, her, duck, her duck butt. Her duck tails. <laughs> so have fun with it because this, is, this should be pretty quick. Pet Parent is watching on TikTok, so we wanted to bring it live on TikTok for you. Thanks a lot for joining. Be sure to sub, follow, like, share, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching, my favorite groomer. So I've got the dog up stand size large, and that's just gonna help her stay stood up while I work with her hiney and her bum here. Right. You're a new client, right? Yeah, you've never been here before, but you are so sweet. You're so sweet. Mm-hmm. I usually groom a lot of, uh, uh, usually, I only groom. <laughs> I mostly only groom aggressive, senior, and disabled dogs. Why? Because it's such a one-on-one -on -one experience. They sit, wait, and watch. They can tell me what to do. They can critique me. They can give me feedback on site. They get to watch everything I do. And guess what? I'm okay with it. But Rebel, she doesn't have any problems or issues. She's not aggressive. She's not mean. She's super nice, she's super kind, but the pet parent was looking for something, something specific. And I think they found me because they get to sit, wait, and watch. If you wanna sit, wait, and watch, hire me. I'm right here in Forward, Texas, and I'll come to you for grooming. You just might pay a little extra for out-of-state grooms. Give me a call, check us out at myfavoritegroomer.com. You hardly have anything to brush, right? But you have lots of hair. What's in here back here? All right, we're gonna trim these up. We can trim them with scissors. You can come back with the guard and trim them with the guard. Uh, we've got some feathers here. This is, this is what they call feathers. Then we have some feathers back here. See how they're feathery, right? So this kind of stuff. And if you don't get right there real good, then when she potties, it can get st stuck or just kind of leave some staining, so we'll clean that up area real good. So you don't have to do a lot. For me, I'm gonna take kind of it all off here. You know, all this stuff flaring off. And you can come in here and look, we'll move the dog up stand. Thank you for the kisses. Thank you for the kisses, we'll move the dog up stand. So you can get your 8.5 shears or any shear that you have. The shorter the shear, because the longer the, the area, the shorter the shear, the more swipes you're gonna have to take. 
So it's totally up to you if you want to use the 10 inch shear that you have, or the eight and a half, or the seven and a half, the five and a half, right? Whatever you end up having, shear is in scissor, okay? Get your shaper brush too. All right, let's see here. Now remember, I have never groomed her before. I've never met her. She's super, super friendly, but you never know. Sometimes an animal is triggered by something that we do or something they feel or something they think because you're new to them. Don't think that they're going to be your best friend because you just met. So always have your mind. Let's tr trim the feathers here. I'm going to trim all this back. Lisa, here, you want to smell first? Some, do some dogs, they want to smell, okay? You want to smell first? Okay. All right, thank you. We're going to trim this back. All right, so I did the scissors on that end, right? Now check this out. Let's go to the other side. I'm going to show you. If you don't have scissors, you can just use clippers. Here, we're just going to take our tin blade, your brain, and just skim the feathering, okay? don't have scissors, you're a beginner, this is your dog, you just want to handle the featherings, you have a clipper. You have your man's manscape clipper, okay? Here, same thing, you can trim this all up with your scissors. Dog upstand is helping me have her stand up instead of sit down because I'm working this area. Here, you can come in with, you know, you put your finger here and know what you're working with, what you're cutting. You can come in and just create like an inverted V, upside down V, okay? And there's some curls, so pull that hair right into your face here so you know exactly what to cut. You do that, okay? Like that, right? Here, see that this hair, it's laying down. I'm gonna show you something else you can do on that end. If you don't have scissors, right? You don't know, if you don't feel comfortable with scissors, you can do this, okay? You can take your tin blade here. And we're gonna come in here. We're gonna clean this sanitary out anyway, right? But I want you to just skim the hair there. Just skim, skim, skim. Imagine you don't have scissors and you're not a groomer. You just have your own dog and your dog has got some featherings that you want to shape out, right? Okay, so now we've got that trimmed back like that. You have your tail to work with. Now here in this area, you can do 10 down, right? You can take your shaper brush, that's just to move this hair right here, bring it back. Look how much we didn't get, right? Because it's kind of thick and dirty. You can trim here like this as well. You can take your seven blade if you're, I yeah, know I'm trying to explain if you're not a groomer, you don't have all this stuff, but imagine you did. You can take a longer blade and go seven reverse here. Okay? So a few different ways to kind of get those furnishings trimmed back, all right? You're also going to see that there's some hair here in the, right? There's hardly any hair. There's hair everywhere, but not hair sticking up that you need to trim back. So same thing. Let's take our tin blade. And let's imagine we don't have scissors and let's just trim all that, skim all that up, right? So we just skim that. Imagine you don't have scissors or hey, how about that day you forgot scissors? When you went mobile, you just grab your stuff and you're like, that got it. I forgot my scissors. Okay, another way to do it is obviously if you have scissors, so you can brush that up like that and just shape the hair up. Like, hi, baby. I can't believe we just met and you're already kissing me. You know what I'm saying? You're already giving me those kisses? Ooh. Ooh, you know I feel special. You giving me some of those kisses. Yes, ma'am. We can go forward this way. Or you can come around from this end, right? You come this way, which are curved. I heard that. Was that your tummy? Was that your tummy tum? There's going to be some stuff here. I'm going to trim that back. I hear your tummy. Are you okay? Is your tummy okay? Hmm? Cool. When they were, when she was younger, they actually had the dew claws removed, you know, so she doesn't have any dew claws. We talked about that on the phone. There's not much to take on the tail, so, 
Uh, just in case I don't see her for just a couple months, we'll just take a tiny bit, nothing, no nothing noticeable. You don't want it to be noticeable, do a point tip, blend that edges in so like you did not trim it into exactly around. Do that. Come back, we'll do the sanitary now. Hold on, hold on, we're almost, we're not done, but we're almost done. Here, come down, come down. Can we give you, put your foot down. Thank you. Let me come in here on your bum bum. You want to lay down? You have to do your tummy. You have to do your tummy. Up, up, up. Up, up, up. Hi. Hi, pretty girl. A lot of dogs that come in to see me are because they're aggressive, seeing or disabled. So she is not supposed to be, but I'm gonna do her nail trim real quick and, and make sure that she doesn't whip back on me for any reason. You don't like that? Oh. I'm gonna get my 40 blade and do the pads real quick. Let's see how she does. What is it that you think you look for best? Because you guys travel a lot. Mm -hmm. What do you think you look for best in a groomer when it comes to her? What's uh, important? To, if they if she likes them, I was like, that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, being comfortable. Like, yeah. yeah. Like when and, she came in here, she snipped around a bit and then laid down so you could tell that it was a peaceful environment. That's, yeah, that's very important. And just uh, when she saw you when we was walking up and stuff and she got all excited, she remembered uh, who you were. Yeah. So it's like, that's a big deal. She's comfortable with you. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, you remember me? <laughs> Has there been an issue where she wasn't comfortable? Uh, I think we boarded her one time, and I think she had a little traumatic experience. From yeah, because she now after ever since then she's had a little bit of anxiety, which is not fun when you see your dog just a uh, going through an episode and stuff. It's just like she just sits there and she'll just shiver, and yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> when is that happening, or when did that happen? Yeah. We think something happened while she was at the boarding. Uh, it was like, but we don't really know what. A year old, mm -hmm. yeah, a year old when uh, we took her there. What do you think the traumatic experience was and what told you that it happened there? She seemed happy, you know, but it was afterwards and it was like, because before we travel, she's been with us, she's always had, loved car rides, never had an issue, and then all of a sudden she was having issues with car rides. So it was like we have, uh, she get, has an anxiety attack while we're driving. And it's not like we're taking her somewhere that she's not happy with, cause, Shoot, she even loves going to the vet. It was just like weird dog, but it is what it is. But just and it was a uh, specifically, she started to shy away from males, and um, so she would like just be right next to us as her protector, um, and she would not want to even sniff a hand or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, females, no problem. So we think it was maybe somebody that was cleaning the cages or something. Uh, like one of the helpers that might have been aggressive or having a bad day, who knows? But, but yeah, that was that was the the, and she's a no no aggression, no fear aggression, anything like that. But she'll just come to a protector instead of you know being her happy self. So yeah, that yep. was the the big behavior change I noticed. So to see that you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. she immediately is telling you something. Yeah, just by her not words, right? Right. right. Dogs don't use words. Mm -hmm. uh, body language. Yeah. <laughs> I get that a lot. I got to talk to the dog. <laughs> we don't have to. We can feel it and mm -hmm. see it. Yeah. Yeah. After I stopped recording, the pet parents let me know 
that at that place that used for pet sitting in Oklahoma, something bad happened and they kind of started trying to troubleshoot what it was. They tried females, like a female walking up on Rebel. Males, figured it out, it was males for sure. Then they started troubleshooting if the male had to have a mustache or a beard or a funky smell or long hair or short hair. And it didn't matter what it was, Rebel gets high anxiety when any man comes near her now. Your dogs are sometimes gonna tell you some things. And no, I don't believe everybody who tells me I need to talk to a dog, you don't need to talk to nobody. You need to read body language, feel their energy, listen with your heart and your mind and with a little common sense. You don't need to talk to the dog to get some communication. Dogs are not gonna talk to you. They're going to show you in their behavior and in their attitude and in their demeanor and in their energy. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. You might not be able to figure it out. But if you know what I'm talking about, comment below that you and your animal can communicate without words. Because it's 100%, 1000% true. Your dog may not tell you that someone hurt them, but they may be asking you for help in all different kinds of ways. Whining, fear, biting, all sorts of ways before you go into a facility. Be sure you're listening. I would rather you pay the cancellation fee than to drop your dog off somewhere where they might not come back. Listen to your dog's behavior, energy, and attitude, reactions to things, always, if you love your animals. Miss Rebel, she did not like the blow dryer. She was trying to jump out of my purple tub, and you know that's pretty high, and that is not all that. Oh my goodness, what are you doing? What are you doing? Let's go towel dry you here. But you're such a party animal. Yes, you are. You're such a party animal. Come here. Come here. Sit down. Sit down. Okay. 
sit, well, you are laying down. Come, come close. Come close. Come here. to dry you honey this whole party thing I I don't know what to tell you come here come here come here you are shaking everywhere but you're gonna be dry here in a heartbeat come here come here let me put this on so I can at least have you nearby come Oh my gosh, go show me again. Go show me again. Go over there, Rebel. Go over here, show me that. What were you gonna do? You grabbed your own leash? Picture. Can you stay till I take a picture? Wait. 
Let me take a picture. Damn it. Does that happen to you too? And she's a really happy dog. So happy. Look, this is the stuff I found in the ears. So we flushed the ears to help them out today. But this is funky monkey stuff, you know. So I've seen this kind of stuff. I've used the ear flushing we have on myfavoritegroomer.com. And that'll help. But it won't go away unless they do something about it. So this color is like tarry. Like tar when it's really cakey and nasty. We should talk about that. So I'm going to come down here and do a seventh lay down here, the, these rear furnishings. And then down the arms here. She consistently keeps sitting down, which is not a big deal, but I could go faster if she was standing. So I'm going to put my large dog up stand here, angle the saddle if necessary, and go from there. A lot of mud down here. We'll do our 10 blade down there. It just rained a couple days ago pretty good. So that's probably why a lot of this mud is there. I know my dogs are definitely having some, some mud, muddy days right now. I like to brush with my shaper brush that hair up. Nice and clear here. Ten blades. Come down for a sanitary. Inverted V kind of. You want to do that? Down the inside of the legs a little bit where the mud is catching. Did I do a good job on the duck feathers? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. On the duck butt? Yep. yep. <laughs> to not be so noticeable, we're going to go ahead and trim with our scissors here. Wait. When some of the furnishings is real light, brush it back out in your way and then see where it lays of inch rim. Up, 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 no, no. Put your foot down, put your foot, no. Up, up, stay stood up. You're good, right there, perfect. Thank goodness for the dog up stand.
That's a big thing of mud right there. I got you. I got you. If it doesn't want to come out now, do it in the tub. We'll rinse all the feet really well in the tub. Move your tail. You see this um, little pocket you got in there? Make sure this one's as clean as the other one. I will not be able to get my finger in there, but maybe the cotton ball will get in there. Yep. Go underneath that little flap right there. There you go. Got it all now. Nice. I am going to flush your ears because that color is still in there and this will help. I'm going to pour from the top, hold this one up, pour from the top. Hold on, hold on. Let that kind of drain in there. Now shake.
So Pet Parent said that she should be fine for the blow dryer this time. Let's just see, because last time she didn't like it. So here we go. This is not okay. This is really tough on her. Okay, I don't care what anyone says. She don't like it. This is our second groom together and the pet parent let me know that while they were traveling through Mississippi, they found a groomer that said she was good with the blow dryer. So I attempted to use the blow dryer. Again, because the first time I used the blow dryer on her, I know for a fact I wrote it in my files and I recorded it. She didn't like it. My dog, I don't let them suffer through the blow dryer if I don't need to. Now, this is grooming. You can't pick up a wet dog every time. I get that. But if you don't mind, why not? Skip the blow dryer if your dog's heart is going a mile a minute, which it is, by the way. But let's just say their heart's going a mile a minute and they hate it. You got to make a judgment call. My judgment call for my dogs is to stop. Your judgment call for your career may be to finish. It really comes down to communication with the pet client, like I do, recording for proof. So we tried it again this time. Blow dryer doesn't love it. I'm not saying she wouldn't let me do it, but she shows me body language that she hates the dang thing, especially when I put on motor number two. So guess what? I asked the client if they were able to watch and see her love the blow dryer in Mississippi. The answer is no. They have no idea. That's just what they were told. Be sure you share proper information with your groom clients, unless they were using a cage dryer, which I don't believe in cage dryers, so I won't be doing that here. Are y'all happy with me as your groomer? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for letting me record. Absolutely. No and no thanks problem. for being my clients. I mean, <laughs> what you all do for a living is so cool. So what do you do for a living? We are tournament poker dealers. Uh, travel on call for all the big tournaments, the WSOP, WPT, and all those fun ones. Every time they come in, I get so excited about it. <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm living vicariously through them. I know this wasn't a very intense groom, but I still hope you learned a few things. Have some understanding and some patience and really read what the animal is telling you while you're grooming the dog or cat or any mammal, any animal for that matter. Thank you so much for being a part of the My Favorite Groomer family by subscribing and becoming a member here on YouTube. I really appreciate you being here and I couldn't do it without you. Come over to MyFavoriteGroomer.com let me know if you need any help. I will come to you. Just contact me, send me a message, and we'll see you on the next video.
Okay, let me get my camera on. You, did you want a toy? Okay, come on, let's go. Which one? Which one was it? This one over here? Did you want this toy over here? This one? This one? Did you want this one? Go get it. Did you want this toy? Come here. Did you want that one? You did. You did. Oh my goodness. Did you want that toy? You were eyeballing that one? Yeah. What was that, Swigger? Oh my goodness. Are you so happy? Really? What? You're too much. You're too much. Oh my goodness. This is our new habit. Yes, it is. It's our new habit. Okay, bye. We'll see you later. Bye. Thanks again. Oh, I love you guys. Guess we'll have to try next time. <laughs> oh my gosh.